Hello and welcome to Bexio. In this video, I will give you a walkthrough to our banking feature. So on, on our homepage, you can find find out on, uh, what what banks we support. So we have banks that have a direct interface or a semi-direct interface. UBS is our preferred partner and has a direct interface with us. And the other banks that have that have semi-direct interfaces with us are listed here. So here, um, the semi-direct banks, there you have to log in to uh, either import transactions or to send payments. In UBS, um, you don't have to do this because it's connected to your, it will stay connected to your Bexio account directly. Okay. So let's go to Bexio Banking then. Before we start, um, please make sure that you have the banking, banking, banking button available here. If you cannot see it by now, um, it's probably because you don't have the right to. So please contact your system administrator and demand for access. Okay. So let's go to banking then. Okay, if you click on this button, you will you will uh, then land in an overview of all your banking accounts as well as cash accounts. And if you click on add bank account, you will see the creation mask. Here you can add, the, let's start, let's start uh, with the top first. If you want to have a cash account in the banking section, then please tick this box here. And if you click this box, you will see the, the details will disappear. So that means you don't have to write an IBAN number to, to create a cash account. Then you can add your description. I'm going to name this ca test cash account. Here you can select the currency. This is the same with uh, creating a bank account as well. Or you can add a, a little little remark on it. If you click on save, the account will be registered in this section. Here. Okay. Um, if you plan if you plan uh, to send invoices with a with a payment slip with reference number. Then you have to add this here. I'm going to show you this by clicking on edit bank account. So you see we have we have filled in the description UBS. We have added the holder's name, the IBAN number, as well as the holder's address, postcode and city. And here are the details to um, to register your invoice with uh, with payment slip. So normally this tick isn't this this box isn't ticked. So if you want to register it, please click on it, and then you will land in this page. Here, if you are if you are using a bank account, all banks except Post Finance, you have to fill in these uh, these six digits, uh, which are provided from your bank. So if you don't know what a BESR ID is, please contact your bank and they'll help you out. Um, second is we have to <clears throat> add the participant number, which is also provided uh, f from your bank, and you can also select when you would like to have the orange background displayed. In our case, we have clicked on never display. This is because we will print out our payment slips on uh, on paper, and the paper is already orange because we have uh, we've bought the original payment slips but if you if you are planning to send your invoices online you can um, select you can select it here so should it only be visible when you're sending invoices without letterhead only with letterhead or both okay and here um, you can add the the percentage of the discrepancy between the amount paid and the invoice amount this is example if you're giving special discounts when, for example, your customer uh, pays the invoice 
within 10 days instead of 30 you can here add you can add it as a uh, as a percentage or as an amount in in our case we have chosen 2% so if the pay if the customer pays two percent less than the invoice amount, it will still be recognized by the banking, and I can still re uh, reconcile it. Here is the payment to field, which is which is displayed on our on our sample on our sample payment slip here. Um, here, if you select with amount, the amount of of the pay uh, in the payment slip will be entered automatically but if you if you choose to give a, a extra discounts for for fast payment then please click on without amount here in in this in this space you fill in your company's details because they will be displayed here and here you can define the stretching factor of the coding line so if you if you increase uh, the factor the 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 code line will be extended wider. And if you are fa facing troubles with printing out your invoices on original payment slips, you can here change the position and you'll have a quick description on how to do it. Okay. Okay. What I have to tell you as well is that if you, if you, create a bank account with this button at bank account the account will not only be created in the banking section but will be created as well in in our in your chart of accounts so that there's no need to create an extra account in the chart of accounts for the bank account that you entered here what also isn't possible uh, is that when you create when you have first created the bank account in your in your chart of accounts, it cannot be linked uh, afterwards to a to an account that has been registered here. So this is not possible. Okay. All right. So what we're what we are going to do now is um, we are going to create a payment. To do this, please go to the to the bank account that you that you would like to create a payment. Um, off and then click new payment and here you can you can enter a, a, a blank payment which is not related to any to any document created before in Bexio but you can also um, create a payment for open bills so what we are going to do right now is we are going to pay this bill um, to make it to make it appear in this section, you have to first mark the invoice as pending in in, in your purchases, uh, the bill as pending in your purchases. So we're gonna choose to pay this one. Here, um, I already have I already I already have the account number for this one um, because I have saved it in the contact. And in the reference, I've already added the, the reference number of the payment slip that was sent with the invoice that I received by post. I'm going, I'm going to show you how to, how, to, um, how to create a bill afterwards, but first we're going to focus on creating a payment. Okay, so right now I have copied my reference number and I have chosen the right account here. Then I can click on select account. All right, and this this mask will then open up. Here you see everything has already been filled filled in because because I have um, I have created a contact for my um, can I say for my creditor, and this has been transmitted automatically to to this payment mask. And what I need to do right now is I have to paste the the reference number that I've copied before, and please make sure that you don't leave uh, empty spaces after the end of, of of every text section. Here you can you can choose when you want when you when you would like to execute the payment, which date. In my case, this will be um, this year probably, <laughs> and then so let's say 
on Monday, 8th of October. And if I click Add to Payment List, the payment is successfully created and it has now the status pending. Status pending means that the created uh, the, the, that the payment has been correctly cr uh, created and is now waiting waiting to be transferred. To transfer the payment, tick the box here. Or if you have uh, several payments, you can also tick this box here. Then all of the payments will be selected. And then you can click on transfer payment. In my case, I am right now using a UBS account. This will automatically be transferred to my UBS e-banking, but there I will still have to sign it. If you are using a bank that doesn't support uh, our automatic transfer, you can also download the, the payment as DTA file or as Payne. Dot zero zero one file, which is in the XML format. Okay, I am going to transfer this. And right now, it has been removed from pending. So we're good to go. I can now check it if it is transferred by clicking on this field. There you see it has been transferred. Okay. Um, what I what I what I'm going to show you right now is we're going to create a bill. So we go to bills, purchases bills, and here here you can see before I start the creation of a new one. Here you can see that the payment that we've entered before has uh, has been sent to the bank. That's that's why the state has changed here. Okay, but now we are going to create a new vendor invoice or bill by selecting this one. So here you can select uh, your vendor. Again, I'm going to choose this this uh, this vendor, and here you can um, here you can enter the reference number, which you can find on the payment slip that uh, that that came with the invoice. So right now I'm going to, I'm going to use the same um, reference number that I did before. Okay. And right now we are here in the creation of a, of a, of a bill. Test position in my case one. Okay, so and as I as I mentioned before, please make sure that that you mark the bill as pending, because if you don't do that, it won't appear in the in the pending list in in, in the banking. So I'm gonna mark it as pending. Okay, so right now, um, the 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 bill is marked as pending, and I can. I have two options to pay it. I, I can either pay it from here. This will open the payment mask or, direct, or I can go back to banking and then create the payment from there. But if you, we're gonna, in, in this case, we'll, we're gonna do this here. We're gonna click on pay bill. And right now, again, you can see that uh, in this contact, I've already saved the bank relation. I'm gonna select this account and the rest we're already familiar with. So I'm gonna add this payment again. In this case, this uh, bill will be paid on the 2nd of November. Great. Okay, I, um, I forgot to tell you that it is important that you that you use the sep that you use these uh, these symbols to separate your participant number, because if you don't do it, it won't be recognized by the bank and you will get an error message. So please make sure that you just uh, either save it in the contact or uh, copy it from from the from the payment slip that you that came with the invoice you want to pay. 
Okay. So that's it for the creation of payments. Um, we're going to add this to the list. And now I'm going to show you how to reconcile your your received transactions from the bank with your Bexio account. Okay. So the the imported transactions are always listed in in this in this area that's called bank transactions and to start reconcile it you have to click on this button reconcile transactions. All right. And in this case if you after you clicked on the button you will you will uh reach this this page and from here on you can reconcile the, the payments so in my case i have received a customer's payment here from muller hunt and i'm going to i'm going to apply it to open invoices that he has in my in, uh, that he has in my company so here he paid us 2466 2, francs and he has two open invoices. So to pay the first invoice with uh, with the combined payment, I have to click on it. Then I have to enter the 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 inter uh, the the invoice amount, and then I have to click outside of the field. Then split amount, and right now it will it will show me the remaining. The remaining amount of the payment, and here I can I can either search with uh, with my customer's name, or I can also search for the uh, concerned invoice. In my case, this is this invoice here, and as you as you could see right now, here um, we have a new incoming payment. With the remaining uh, 706 francs, and I have already uh, I have already discounted him with 10 francs, so that means my payment of 2,466 francs can be reconciled now. And if I click on this button, this transaction will disappear. All right. So this was this was a this was a this was a positive transaction for my customers invoices and here we have a, an, an example of, uh, of 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 a payment of of one of my payments and here if if the amount and the reference number are corresponding we will give you we will give you uh we will give you a how can i say it um a recommendation on on how to reconcile it so in that case this payment um corresponds to to an invoice that I, that I that I have created in my account, so I can also reconcile this one. Okay, and here there's uh, there's a third way actually um, of of uh, of booking a transaction. So I have showed you now how to reconcile transactions. For customers' invoices as well as for bills, and um, the third and fourth way to reconcile transactions is the following. So, if you have if you have a payment or a transaction set that is not corresponding to any document that you have here, you can also make a manual entry. So in that case, it's similar to the manual entries in um, accounting, but the the amount is already filled filled in because this this will always correspond to this amount and here you can choose the accounting accounting account from here and then you can just add a description add a VAT tax rate and if 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 everything is fine you can click on reconcile now Oh, and you can also you can also add um, PDF files or or images to to your bookings. So you can either upload them directly from your computer to this special uh, to this certain um, transaction, or you can also 
choose a file from your inbox which is visible under apps. So that, that's the third way of reconciling transactions. The fourth would be um, you could you could also make um, um, how can I say that uh, a re recon um, reconciliation to your to a customer's account. But this is in most cases this is not needed. To do this, you have to just you just have to enter the customer's name. So Müller Hans, for example. And if I click on him right now, oh excuse me, you have to we have to click on credit. I made a mistake. Here I have to enter the name and right now I can book this onto his customer account, which is accessible if you go to contacts, finances, and then you will then you will find this account. Okay. You can also uh, book expenses from here, but please make sure uh, that you have already um, entered the expense over purchases. And in this example, I have to go here. I have to, I'm going to copy this number. Oops. So we're going to go back to banking. So it's the first expense that we had here. Okay, and right now I I made a mistake with the with with the reconciliation, but I can I can now show you how to undo an incorrect in reconciliation. So to do this, we go back to banking and then instead of clicking on this button, we click on this one which says show bank transactions. And from here on, I have to undo this this transaction. So I click on actions and then click on undo reconciliation. And right now I can go back to banking, go to reconcile transactions, and with this um, with this transaction, I'm going to book an expense. So here it it, it is it has been already corresponding to uh, this 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 expense. And I, I remember I told you before that this was an in, this was a bill. Um, that's not correct. It was an expense. But actually, I have to tell you that this won't happen too much. That you know that w that we will automatically find the corresponding expense. So probably you will you will have to search for an expense. And to do it, um, you can you can either enter the uh, expenses number or you can also enter the amount and then you will find the corresponding expense. Right now I'm going to reconcile it and then it then it's good. Okay and then also and uh, also a very handy um a very handy trick is trick a very handy feature is if you probably have a few a few transactions that you don't need to reconcile with your accounting you can select them here if you go to show bank transactions as i showed before and then you can just tick them oops excuse me tick them and then you can select ignore transaction and if you click on Go here down at the bottom right side. They will be automatically ignored and will no longer be visible if we go to to the bank transactions. Okay, so that's it. That's it for this video. Um, if you have further questions on how to connect your bank please visit our help center i'm going to show you I'm going to show you this in a second
So you'll find our help center on uh, on the on the page support.pexio.com. I'm going to display it quickly for you. Okay, and here you have all of our modules here. And if you click uh, on banking, for example, you will find some you will find some articles on how to on how to handle our our banking feature. So thank you for your attention and have fun using Bexio. Goodbye.